sent me this. I don't know what this video is about. Is there a description to this? Let's see. Trash. Greg's current arc has been super fucking weird, says Mr. Whiskers. <laughs> All right, let's see what Armored Skeptic's up to. Um, he, uh... This guy likes to suck his own farts. Let's see. I haven't watched an Armored Skeptic video in ages. Cool, dude. Wow, this is cringe. I really do. Wow, that was... Oh boy. It's changed a bit. Okay. I don't like the idea of making videos bragging about how smart I am. Okay, I like it, but I've never really done it before. In fact, I've never really done a proper follow-up to anything that I've covered in the past, besides some vlogs on my backup channel. So I got really excited about a recent archaeological discovery, a discovery that one could argue I basically predicted, and this has inspired me to explain how I even got to this point in my YouTube career in the first place. This guy's always been so fucking cringe, dude. There is something about his personality. <laughs> Man. He had like a little, a little, little tiny sliver of time where it's like, is this guy cool? And it just, just went away. Man. God, he's cringe. Even the way he does his voice. <laughs> Man. This guy has always come across as deeply insecure to me. Please. So what am I talking about here? A few months this is shoes X, ago, me. an archaeological team uncovered an ancient relief of a hero character in Turkey dating back to at least 11,000 years ago. Right around that same time as the character from Gobekli Tepe, also in Turkey. This new character is paired up with other figures, such as large cats surrounding the central figure, and a bull that is fighting a second depiction of that same character who is now holding a snake. As I've described in other videos, these are all elements from the hero's journey. This is a big deal. The archaeologist. Is he holding his dick? See the one that was in the Harold Peasman chick track? That was him, yeah. Still good tracked. Yep. Logical team that found this is being celebrated for finding the oldest narrative scene ever depicted. This is the oldest story we have ever found. And the best part is it's carved in stone. Why is he talking like this? Is this where the content is now? I mean, this is fine. This is cool. I'm interested. The good stuff. I knew that this guy existed and told you about him over two years ago. I showed how this character holding his junk spread all across Asia and even North America during a huge human migration starting around 11,000 years ago. I theorized the existence of a hero character originating in Turkey dating back to 12,000 years ago with Superman chevrons on his chest and holds his fat. Alice. And then I all with Superman chevrons on his chest. Bro. <clears throat> Three thousand years of narrative culture seems unlikely in those spaces. Six thousand to thirteen? What is how can you this seems this date seems funny and holds his phallus. And then I also, in a separate video, showed you that there is a character who holds back animals, a master of animals. And <sighs> this is uh Harappan. Uh Wowzers. Common human... 
Oh, fuck. He's on some conspiracy shit, man. Do you know why there are depictions of humanoid creatures doing this to stop things? <laughs> Can you guess? Like, it's just your natural reaction to fuck. Like, you're going to run into normal human motif. Dudes with dicks, and they're holding, they're touching their dicks. Dudes touching their dicks in 10, 11,000 years ago. Man. It has to do. You know, I'm shocked that only one person in all of history can hold his dick. That's that's really how it is. Like, some of those were Herms that he showed, I think. <laughs> but, like, man, this and is some weird stuff. At the end of that video, I am... This is not the same. ...implied that he has to be that same character, that same hero from Gobekli Tepe that holds his junk. And until today, I have not actually had one single piece of evidence to actually say that those two characters are the it same. But this guy is very clearly both of those heroes. He has chevrons and he's he's got animals next to him. Uh... Oh my, it's almost like many myths across cultures are about fighting back natural and supernatural forces in the form of animals. It's almost like it's reacting to pushing back dangers to early civilizations. Are you here to tell me that humans with dicks... Humans with dicks that wore things around their shoulders had natural predators in the area? amalgamated into one. He is the original hero from the hero's journey. And look at him. There he is. An 11,000 year old Superman mastering animals holding his junk. Now it might not be extremely significant that we found yet another example of a master of animals. And it might not be extremely significant that we found yet another 11,000 year old version of this hero from Gobekli Tepe. Well, I mean, those are both very significant things. But what is very significant is that I had to go around the world twice in two separate videos to prove that these two heroes are the same hero. And then only a few months later, they found a relief that literally does exactly that in one foul swoop. Holy shit. There are a lot of hypotheses that I have like this, though. And Got a lot of... Uh... <clears throat> Illuminati triangles here, man. The real Jesus, that's right. Sometimes I set them up as riddles for you to figure out on your own, hoping that you'll take the bait and one day beg me to make a video explaining them, but... What? Someday I make riddle videos and hope that you will beg me to do things. What a little fucking freak. What is happening to this guy's brain? <laughs> Don't give away your master plan, Gregory. I'll admit that I'm a little bit shocked that after my Fallen Angels video, that I said that the Fallen Angels came from the Dog Star series, and not one single one of you asked me where the Dog Star series actually is on the globe. Oh, you're not asking the right questions, chat. Cool. I mean, I'll tell you, you're going to hate the answer. Lumeria. What the fuck? I know. Ugh. If I may get poetic again here for a second, there is a beauty in mystery. And being the guy that destroys that beauty makes me a villain. It has to do. Does it? What community is he running in that people are like attacking him for destroying the beauty and conspiracy theory? What? This feels the most candid you have been as an author of the series. You play a character and you choose what you tell us, but this is the most vulnerable you've been about the process itself. I really appreciate this video. Your videos have been a huge inspiration for my art, specifically in the creation process. Wowzers.
You are underappreciated, man. A lot of people these days have been manipulated so badly they'd rather scroll through 30-second dopamine hits and watch an amazing series where their brain has to work harder than it has than it has to and could actually learn something worth learning, which is sad, but they'll want to know soon. Lol, winky face. Thanks for the inspirational boost at the end there. Okay. Ooh. It might be beautiful to have mysticism and magic in life, but it's pretty damn beautiful to learn more and see things in new lights. You're not a villain. You're just pointing out things we've all been subconsciously suppressing for decades. That's why I play the... Maybe I just don't get it. It has to do... Maybe, maybe, maybe Greg would be like, you just don't fucking get it, dude. You don't understand what I'm doing. Okay, I'm ready. Armor Skeptic, you are the only one that can see this comment. Cease your investigations into your dick-touching idol. <laughs> Thanks for the video. Villain character. It's magical not knowing what's happening behind the curtain. It's magical believing that an angel is sent from heaven and is not just some deranged lunatic with money and power or some lightning anomaly in the sky being used to manipulate you in some way. We'd like to believe Sorry we're not that. being manipulated. You can try but I'd like Sorry. to be that guy that knows the truth and lives in the pain of the truth. And describing those mysteries in live in the pain of the truth the pain of truth across my fucking arm write it across my arm I'm gonna bleed from the pain of truth in story form can make those mysteries more magical or they can take that well, magic away and I've done it fart. both ways Big fat and I think rips that's sort of the point of my series that's why I like to do everything through fiction and adding a little bit of lore and mystery myself because I know that it's painful finding out that the world is rotting on the inside that too can still be beautiful like the rabbit that's a perfect metaphor for Jesus that's, a, that's something that you can use both ways. Ancient people would spend their entire spring and summer hunting rabbits until they all disappeared in the winter. And then you hang a dead rabbit on your fence at the end of the season, and magically millions more rabbits would show up next spring. But we know now that that's not a miracle. That's not magic. That's simple biology. That's math. But back then, they needed stories. They needed lore to understand how those sorts of things were happening on under their feet. Those stories were created by ancient people to describe the processes of the universe, to help them better understand their place in the world, and to give them better agency over their land and the animals that they farm. And all of those stories are based off of celestial movements. Those heroes describe the movements of the stars so that those people would know when, during the year, to do those things. I hope that that's at least one of the things that I've managed to demonstrate throughout this series. Even the Sumerians used the stars to describe their religion. And the hero from the hero's journey is not even the only part of my theory. I'm still completely convinced that my garden machine hypothesis is also correct, an ancient power plant based on the pyramids of Egypt. I believe last time he got mad at me, it was about this subject of Am I wrong? I feel like the pyramids were part of it. He got so mad at me. I think Shu got mad at me at the time because they were still dating. Whoops. And uh, talking about little fucking power. Like, this is so weird. So weird, man. A design that people maintained well into the Victorian era and then suddenly disappeared and for some reason nobody remembers that those buildings existed, even though they still exist. I wasn't the first person to point my brain in this direction. I followed Tesla's footsteps on this concept. In fact, his tower in Long Island is based off of the Great Pyramids. But I am clearly the first person to model this design to fit neoclassical Gothic structures. Nobody built a more modern model that fits classic buildings before me. And bro, he is so far the du down the Dunning-Kruger rabbit hole, bro. He is like, I'm a fucking genius. He's convinced he's smart. He's like, I must be. Like, this is why. This is why no one can fucking hang with me in a conversation. I'm actually fucking smart. I'm a genius. The, the pyramids? Actually fucking power plants, bro.
I should have named this. I should have named this whole thing. Armored skeptic is a wacko. I, I, I just think he's a wacko. This is just wild stuff. Nothing conducts huge amounts of electricity like fucking sun. No, it's electromagnetic. <laughs> That's different. And to prove that I'm correct, I am also the first person to promise to build a new mountain of God with a giant letter G on the side using the original Ark of the Covenant as its core. Well, one day. What the fuck? But my prediction of the hero character discovery is related to my universal religion hypothesis. I knew this guy existed because I saw his archetype in every major religion throughout history. Every single time I tried to get the story to fit a new religion, they always had a character within that religion that perfectly fit the archetype. Including... Every time I tried to fit it in, it fit. Wow. Armored Skeptic. Interesting. That's so interesting. Gregory. What a scholar. What a guy. That's what I learned when I went to school to parse historical information. That's what my anthropology professor taught me. <laughs> Is, hey, if you have a hypothesis, just like insert it and make it work. True. That's what she taught me. In Christianity, <laughs> I levied the hypothesis that all of these stories are describing the same. <laughs> it's the oldest depiction of a man holding his dick. You can see it plain, plain as day. Events and similar subsequent events, and that they're. That's thirty-three thousand years old. That's a carving, my friends. It's a carving of a man with a dick. <laughs> Tesla did not base his tower off the pyramid by the standard cell tower. Uh, the standard cell towers are based on the pyramid. It's nothing to do with the shape, structural stability, and material use. No, no, no. Triangles. Tri it's triangles. Describing the same man who experienced those events. A hero who got humanity through the hard times. A hero who knew exactly what was going on. That everyone... He's the hero. He's going to come f***ing crawling on their hands and knees, begging for help when... It's actually him. Greg thinks it's him, isn't it? And the bad things start to happen. I, well, I mean, maybe that'll happen. <laughs> Anyways, that all bloomed into a universal, grand unified theory that I feel is starting to prove itself to what be true. Fuck? And that unified theory is that the apocalypse is on the way. So this discovery itself doesn't really prove that the apocalypse is true, obviously. That's just like a story point that I keep using to sort of keep all of these religions tied together. But I think... That's a story point I use to keep all these religions tied together. Like, so... This is, ju this is just his fucking... He's like world building his, uh, his little... His little uh, story? Think that I can officially say this pillar of my theory is officially in the bag. I guess you could say that the three pillars of my theory are the universal hero hypothesis, check mark there, the universal world religion hypothesis, I feel like I'm kind of halfway there proving that, and then the ancient technology hypothesis, which is going to be the hardest to prove, but I feel like my last video, I might have changed some minds with that one. I think this guy in Turkey helps prove that this hero character is universal. I don't understand the causality between those pillars. I guess I would have to consume 600 hours of uh, Greg's fucking content, though. And is related to the cataclysm events Jesus of 12,000 years ago. So... Oh, my God. Am I... How much fucking content? Am I going to have to dig into Greg's fucking conspiracy shit just to figure it out? How many videos does this guy make? He doesn't make that many videos, I guess. The Mandela Effect, Who Are the Men in Black, Roswell, World's Largest UFO Sighting, The Death of, of Armored Skeptic, oh no. What is this? 
Ghosts are fake. Ghosts, ghosts are fake. Ghosts, is my apartment haunted? I don't. Ghosts are real. Did I just talk to a demon? Ghosts are real. Ghosts are fake. Bigfoot's real. Bigfoot's fake. Mothman. Stay in your room. The sins of Prager U. White male rage. Uh oh. He doesn't have that many videos. Ghosts are real, I guess. The end of all conspiracy theories? Uh oh. Is this where it started? This video right here? History is a lie? Like, I'm starting to see alien skulls? Uh oh. Uh. So, History is a Lie seems to be the series. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to keep going. I need to figure this out, man. SNL vs. White Men. That's right. He started off doing like a two video series where he would present a conspiracy and then debunk the next and then change what you see now. Well, that's what he was criticizing me about. I don't know which of these I saw back in the day. I don't remember which video it was. Uh, I saw one of them and he got really mad at me because he's like, you don't get it. It must have been the Bigfoot video maybe? So he does the angel and the devil, and then he sort of just like, just abandons it, and now it's about, he sits in his fucking little dark room and looks at UFO shit. Wowzers, dude. But now, now we're on this stuff? His sassy little rant soda. All right, man. Boom. Big win for Gregory. But I was genuinely feeling anxiety about telling you guys about this stuff in the very beginning. I always wanted to tell you about this. I mean, I had some of this shit figured out back in 2011. But 2011's before my time there. So when you were doing skeptic content, you were also conspiracy theorist. That's very fascinating stuff. <laughs> Vibe check confirmed. Ding scorpion. Thanks for the sixteen months. Hey chat. I was right about this guy. I've been right about this guy. I knew this guy was a little freak when we talked to him. I knew he was a little weirdo. I've never fucking liked him. That's not true. I liked him for a minute and then I talked to him for during that. Literally during the chick tract, I was like, man, I don't know about this fucking guy. Like, <laughs> like after the after the chick tract was over, and we had some fun. We talked after, <clears throat> you know, we talked after for a little bit, and my vibe was like, okay, well, he, he's sort of up his own ass, but like he's he's feeling good because he just hit a milestone on YouTube, and so whatever. Um, and then like a little time goes by, and shoe on head. This is a real story. Shoe on head DM'd me. Um, it was way back in the day, because uh, they were dating at the time. Shuan had DM'd me and was like, "Hey, Greg, hit whatever uh, some sort of like 200k or something or 150. I don't remember what it was. 100,000 subscribers. Um, and he's having like some people in a call to like hang out and talk about it and like celebrate with him. Do you want to come? And I'm like, not really. <laughs> I, I was I didn't show up. Ever since I didn't show up to that, he's been weird to me. I don't know if it was that, but, like, literally since that moment, I didn't care to... I was like, nah, I'm good. Like, <laughs> why would I go to your little fucking subscriber party? I don't care. We're not friends. It was really weird. <laughs> it was so weird. I was, like, busy. Yeah, real petty. I don't know what it was. I remember getting that DM that I could probably look it up, but I don't care, too. 
Uh, I wonder what that was for. But I'm... Best thing he was ever part of was a character I made up. Harold Famous. We still have him. He's still around. Because I am he. He is me. Really happy that I waited until now because all of the pieces fell into place at exactly the right time. Okay. Like imagine that I tried to prove this like five years ago and then I had to wait until today to finally say, aha, I was right. That'd be so humiliating. Still, I needed a motivational boost to get me started. Oh, it was the mud cities. It was the big mud stuff. He said that it wasn't. I was like, you're stupid for believing this mud shit. And then he's and all of this in the very beginning. And all of those mud flood guys were so absolutely shit terrible at researching these subjects and disseminating the information. They didn't give me any confidence that I was going to be taken seriously on these subjects. Losing then one floods. day while I was researching old world technology, I accidentally came across this lecture by a man who helped refurbish the centralized steam heating system in part of New York City. I can't remember which borough, but we have one of these in Kingston, Ontario as well in the university campus. Basically, the way these work is a building with a central boiler system sends steam out into radiators across dozens of buildings throughout an entire borough of a city. This is common technology from the 1800s, and several cities have something like this. So seen. one might assume that they are super simple steam systems and that maintaining them should be extremely intuitive and easy, right? It is... <laughs> No, they are old and not very well designed systems. Wrong. They had no f***ing idea how the system worked. Told you. From how the air was supposed to move throughout the buildings, or what the underground tunnel system was for, or how a steam circuit even works in the first place, they were completely screwed. Then one day, this totally normal guy comes along. This totally regular guy with a unique view that had never seen something like this before, looks at the system, studies the buildings, and within a few weeks has the entire system completely figured out down to every detail. He had New York back up and running in months, and he wasn't even educated on that kind of thing. It was just a riddle to him. He just this solved man's name? the riddle. Just a normal f guy. Watching him give this lecture on how he was able to figure this out was perhaps the single most inspirational thing I had ever experienced in my life. I watched that two months before I made my first history video. I couldn't wait to tell you guys about that. Like, this guy even noticed that each of these buildings had a screen door in their basement. Like, the way you would put a screen door at the entrance of your house to keep bugs out. But these doors instead led down twisting stairways into a Citation, tunnel system. Yeah. And this guy noticed that the buildings that had replaced those screen doors with a solid door were the buildings that were experiencing the most problems. Well, it turns out that those screen doors are supposed to allow air to flow down to those tunnels. Those tunnels are cold air return vents and they all lead back to the central boiler like an air circuit, like a normal central heating system. Like, f genius, man. I never would have figured that out, right? Me? But it was all about it just being a riddle. A riddle to solve. And it's like, yeah, like, like that's it. That's, we all want to solve those riddles. And since then, I've laid out a lot of the answers to the mysteries of the universe to you guys. Stuff that masons and shit have to struggle decades to learn. <laughs> I just give that shit to you for free, and you don't even and care. That's the funniest part. I mean, I literally have a video that explains how the entire fucking universe works, and it doesn't even have a hundred thousand views. This guy is coping. Holy shit. What a fucking weird guy. I have to watch this video now. I gotta know. I mean, everything Fuck all of you <laughs> there's no justice in this world the point i'm trying to make here though is that i am nobody i'm just an idiot youtuber doing this for fun and i managed to predict the existence of an ancient 12,000 year old hero character who holds his junk and masters animals all right i did that an idiot nobody and if i can do that just around for fun Jesus imagine what you could do so get out there I just I just
hundred thousand views. It has six hundred thousand views. It doesn't have a million views though. That was bad. <laughs> this guy is unfucking believable. Thanks for the video. There's no justice in the world, chat, because Greg, he doesn't have as many views as he should have. He needs more, more views. Not that one. Savior in the sky. Is this the one? This one has 83,000. There we go. This is the one. Eight months ago. This is how the universe exists. Okay. This is the video where I answer the question that you want to know most. And you probably won't realize it while you're actually watching the video, but I'm hoping that one day in the future, when you're reflecting back on this whole series, it's all going to click for you. I <laughs> He's so smart, guys. He's so smart. He couldn't just give it to you straight. He is... He's going to teach you how the world works. He's above it all. Man. I told you, this guy's always been insecure and huffing his own farts. He literally cannot handle that no one fucking watches these. <laughs> I literally have a video telling you how the world works. Like, exactly. I mean, I gotta smoke more, more weed. Hey, chat. Um, thanks for hanging out. I hope you're having a good time. If you would like to, you should subscribe immediately. We could do a little booty party at any point. I'm just tossing that out there. And not for nothing... Uh, we already had the first one, so uh, level three is your new goal. Scrap I should warn alien. you, though, this will be my last video about the apocalypse. I just don't have it in me anymore. And uh, I don't have it in me anymore. I lied. I lied. I lied. I lied. I just I, this one. This one. You. I said in this video that everyone's gonna die. It's okay. It's okay. He, he, he did it for a little bit. And on my last episode of... This content's Gregory making my dog Stilton cry. <laughs> what do you want to bet he trains with those swords? Oh, yeah. Times cult. I explained that the crucifix is actually the abomination of desolation described in Revelation. <clears throat> and since this is going to be my last video about the apocalypse and Jesus, I should probably tell you what God actually looks like, so that when you see the Savior at the end of the apocalypse, you'll actually recognize him when... Je Armored skeptic. Jesus appears in the clouds, you will know that the worst of the apocalypse is over. And I wasn't trying to give you any specific conviction about using a crucifix. I don't care if you have one. But there it is a distinct be. difference between imagery and symbolism. On trains day. Evil yeah. symbolism can be hidden in holy imagery. The Da Vinci Code talks about this. The Da Vinci Code? He's appealing to Da Vinci Code? Virage, wait, Vir Virage Paladin, what's that? I gotta know. What's that? Oh, Average Paladin? You just meant Average. Virage! Imagery is more vague and open vague. to interpretation. See, vague? Jesus dead with a spear I like this Jesus because he has a little pooch. The emotions of the struggle associated with his suffering. The motivation he had to climb on the cross. It serves as a reminder to us that the debt has been paid. We have empathy, so art affects us emotionally. When we see this, our minds remind us visually and emotionally the entire story of Jesus and everything he went through. To those those without empathy, Bab Potch pilled Jesus. Let's go! Thanks for the biddies. This is just a still image of God dead at the hands of the great Phoenix. It's a celebration of I their the Phoenix? What the fuck? Today. No pickles! Give one to an extensible spoon and chat! Look, I don't mean to surprise to, to, to alarm you, but we're working out! We're working out! I heard Ellie go, Hello. or something like that, or like, Mom. those ads were part of the deep state effort to attack the corn. What the fuck? What the fuck? Aeroflux? You got it here. I'll put the music on for a sec. Not that music, though. 
Silly Donnie trying to get all the music all the time. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Stay in the same sort of source. You got it. Boom. Let me mark it down. Lesbian. Hey, reflux. And whatever no pickles wants. Number one. I like my corn with lime, salt, and some chili. Smart. Smart. Nico's been meowing? Oh no. What a baby. What a baby cat. Ace Flux? For sure. Oh yeah. There you go. Ace Lux, Aero Flux, Lesbian, all gained one. Which means Lesbian maintains a lead. Hey. Citosaurus. Going the Gnome Pickles route. Propping it up. Let's go. <clears throat> all right, Greg's going to show us the secrets of the universe. I'm ready. I'm in. All right, Greg, let's continue. Yeah, they're pretty. Everyone say, thank you, Brooke. I don't think she's here right now, but thank you, Brooke. <laughs> An Aeon Flux as if Mr. Whiskers and Gnome Pickles do a fusion dance. <laughs> Jesus. That's funny. All right. Their victory. In reality, the empty cross itself actually represents Jesus, the green man, a man with his arms out in a protective pose. Just like the onk or the keyhole, this is one of the oldest symbols of the savior. The Romans literally described crucifixion as nailing someone to a tree. So in reality, the Romans were actually crucifying Jesus on a depiction of himself. This shape is also the tree of life. The same tree of life described Bro, it... It's... It's an efficient design. <laughs> the garden. I just... <laughs> like, a lot of crucifixion didn't even happen on the crossbeam, man. I, like, I don't know. I know he knows these things, and I know that he would dismiss it and say, but yeah, but it means that because you don't understand the symbology, dude. I do. I understand the symbology. Like, it's just, it's seeing motif where there's just not a fucking motif. A right angle is not a depiction of your fucking ancient guy holding his dick and keeping lions at bay. <sighs> Man. Of Eden. All of these images represent that same hero that we will see appear in the sky during the apocalypse. The same Messiah in the clouds. The same Savior we see every time. The and he's so, and like when when the fucking apocalypse happens, we're gonna see a magic man. It is insane shit, bro. Archangel Big. Mikael, the same man depicted in the oldest petroglyphs on Earth. The squatting man. The light bringer. Lucifer. Wow. Goosebumps, Chad. All right, goosebumps. You ever held your dick, Jake? It's pretty divine. I have held my dick. Got the earth. Holy shit! That font. Is this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like TMNT two? Like, is this? The font is like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a little bit. Maybe it's just the green. No, it's not. Godzilla 2000, maybe? Godzilla 2... It's reminding me of like one of these. Uh... <laughs> Wait, actually, that was called Godzilla 2000. I meant the Broderick. Godzilla Broderick. That one. 
This one. This one. Ooh, yeah. This is more. This is closer to what I was talking about. Godzilla size does matter. Nice. Nice. Anyway. Very cool, man. There used to be an old folk superstition. Oh, fuck. Superstition that when somebody found a tree in the woods that almost looked like a person, they it would cry one. out that they found the green man, either sleeping or hiding, or moving so slowly that you can barely perceive him. One with nature. Babylon would later pervert this superstition about trees and use it to perform the two most evil and torturous forms of execution to ever exist crucifixion, and burning at the stake, both of which insults to the green man. But there are signs that the garden religion still had influence in the world during this time. The this garden is religion? Unsil, the Greco-Roman god from about 500 BC. This is the transitional fossil that I was able to use to connect the old world god logic to the new world. This is Mikael, the archangel Michael. His appearance is quite striking. Clearly an Apollo clone. His face is identical. Apollo the shepherd His face him is identical. <laughs> himself be uh, yeah. being a prototypical <laughs> Jesus yeah. character. Uh. In fact, <laughs> Apollo is so similar to Jesus in some depictions as a boy that historians sometimes have trouble telling if a statue is supposed to be depicting Apollo or Jesus. Unsil has wings over his head, which give him a very unique shape, unlike any other god. But what I find most surprising is the focus on his large hands. They're featured quite prominently. <laughs> He's like the always sunny hands guy? If I type in always sunny hands guy, I'm gonna definitely get it, right? Yeah. Would you mind taking a shot of the three of us for the website? We're lawyers! Anyway, he's got things about his hands. Same shit. Which is so funny because who would even think to pay attention to the size of somebody's hands? His position implies that he's blocking something, protecting us. Uh. He is the savior of the earth, the defender. And if it's not clear that he's a prototypical it Jesus character, here's Unsil walking on water. Huh. Wow, that's pretty fucking crazy. Dude, this guy wants to be an art historian so bad. He's just, he, I mean, he's literally just doing ancient aliens. I mean, this is just ancient alien stuff. This is what they always do. Like, I agree that there are, like, social reasons why you'll find depictions of people like Apollo and Jesus run into each other regionally and social. I mean, they're right next to each other uh, around the same time. Uh, yeah, it totally makes a lot of sense um, that they would have similar qualities. Um you may see some differences between Apollo and Jesus, however. Uh, I am thinking of the hands clip. Anyway, speaking of clips, I forgot to play this one. This is me the first time I met uh, Armored Skeptic. Hey, it's nice to meet you. This world is imperfect. What? If only I could wipe away the impurities. Is anybody else listening to and this? make it as beautiful as me. <laughs> Sandoroth, you are behind all this? Yes, it was I. My machinations lay undetected for years. <laughs> for, for I'm a master of deception. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, if there's someone to point the finger at, it would be his brother! Oh my god! Oh my god, nobody look! Nobody look! Nobody look! Yeah, it reminds me of something little, uh, like a, a little Joel video almost. The concept would be, what if, what if there was a guy who had hand insecurity? That sounds like a little Joel bit. The savior character is always seen as standing on the ocean, and this also connects to the concept okay. of Hermes. So why does why does Dave think that the Mediterranean culture has heroes that walk on water? I assume he would have a normal because it's a water cult it's watery culture man it's important it would be very important for someone to do that right son of Zeus who was the only god who could travel between heaven earth and hell 
just like Jesus. And Uncil with wings is also very similar to the image of Perseus defeating Medusa. You don't see any D David crossover here, just, 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 okay. Perseus is also a son of Zeus, who was a savior figure. Perseus has wings on his head, and Perseus has wings on his feet. The double-winged design creates an hourglass shape. There are even types of angels described in the Bible with this basic shape, covered in eyes. I think that the Messiah is depicted as walking on water because this image is so large when it appears in the sky that it touches the horizon of the ocean. To a sailor, it would look like he's standing on the horizon. Another son of Zeus was- It's so wild that you're like, he actually couldn't just walk on water. He was just so fucking huge that it looked like he was walking on water. That's what makes the most sense to me. That's what the myth actually described. Insane stuff, man. Hercules. Once he defeated the Hydra, the multi-headed dragon, just as Zeus himself defeated Typhon, the multi-tailed winged god of fire. These are all depictions of separate apocalyptic events. A savior figure in the sky defeating a multi-tendrilled snake-like destroyer figure. The motif of a savior, a man with his arms out, is universal. We see this in almost every ancient culture. Often he's described as the beast tamer or the master of animals. A man or woman who can harness the violent aspects of nature and confidently battle them. Yeah, there's no reason to show multiple depictions of this ever. And people are not satisfied by symmetry either. <clears throat> the only, only thing is they all must be the same exact person and everyone has a unspoken cultural memory of, of the magic guy we see at the apocalypse. That's what makes sense. That's what makes sense to me, for sure protecting humanity from the beasts of the heavens yep. and the earth. Gilgamesh is also a tamer of the lion, often depicted holding a lion under his arm, as was Durga, the protector goddess who rides a lion. Orion is the lion hunter, because the lion was the most dangerous animal. Orion wears a lion pelt like Hercules to signify that he has conquered Leo's power, turning it from a destructive force into a force for good. Like Lucifer wielding the dark side of the force to perform acts of light. Really the reason the crucifix betrays Jesus is because it focuses on the wrong part of the story. If you read Matthew, the focus is actually on the part where he's struggling to survive. Despite the fact that they've spent the entire day punishing him, he should have had no energy left, yet he stood strong in his resolve and endured. Throughout his <laughs> I just love, I just love how fucking cucked this guy got by this entire fucking concept. It's so, it's so interesting. He is, he is lost, man. Lost in the fucking sauce. Punishment, he continued to draw breath, still with... Like, he's drawing these crazy lines between, like, cultural, like, similarities. But if you ask, if you ask a sociologist or an anthropologist or a uh, archaeologist, even, like, from, that specializes in the area, like, they can tell you why, like, <laughs> why, like, these different depictions come up or they can tell you a good guess that is based on the environment like there's a reason that these are aquatic like aquatic based gods his brain broke man fight in him and his fight does not end until god himself turns his back on jesus causing the three days of darkness wow. this image of jesus fighting his death on the cross is a mirror of the story of samson between the pillars an earlier biblical story about a hero who was betrayed by a woman and overcomes captivity in a feat of strength collapsing the this is how uh, greg sees himself after his breakup a woman who wronged him, not no longer being romantically attracted to him. <laughs> a woman, <laughs> he's he, he uses his supernatural, uh, not his brawn, his brains, of course, uh, to keep the pillars up. That's 
He's gonna he's gonna teach the world about the coming apocalypse. The two <coughs> pillars to which he was chained. Hercules is also often depicted between pillars or between the heads of the Hydra. But a better example of this feat is when Hercules defeated the two snakes as a child. The story of Hercules strangling the snakes resembles the biblical story of Satan testing Jesus at the top of the earth. Some versions of the story I love how Hercules- I love how he's like, hey son, come into my throne room. And then before he sits down, he sits down, and he's like, his robe's like covering his dick a little bit, and he's like, oh shit, fuck. Just gotta barely uncover my dick for before my son Hercules comes in, because I know his dick's gonna be out, and I don't want him to feel weird if our dicks aren't, aren't out. That's what the artist decided going into drawing this. Very fascinating. He's performing this act in heaven on the top of Mount Olympus. But this master of animals image, or Hercules strangling the snakes, is the most appropriate to the real life event. It will literally look like the savior is holding back giant snakes. The real life event will look like the savior holding giant snakes when the apocalypse happens in real life. My name is Gregory Flair here. What guy, dude? Nobody watches this. He's teaching you how the fucking universe works, guys. And I also really like the Master of Animals because it ties all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Of course, the concept of a son of Adam being the only one that could tame the beast in the sky because only a son of Adam can master animals. Why? But I think that I make my point with the figure that we find above the sun gate in Tiwanaku. This Th that's where he makes my his point? His point is being made now. Okay. Who's this guy? This is Armored Skeptic. This looks exactly like baby Hercules holding back snakes with a sun crown or a sun burst around his head. This figure is above the tree line. Okay, like... We are symmetrical beings. We have arms and legs. Like, defending yourself against snakes or other natural predators, nature, like, in these times, like, that was a real everyday fucking worry. Every single day. These are depictions of humans overcoming the natural obstacles of their space. And sometimes, not all the time, sometimes cultures, millions of people, th billions of people over the course of thousands of years, have similar artistic ideas that span time. Like, it's wild he thinks this is the same cultural person. Like, this is what we're depicting. There's just no evidence to back that up whatsoever. Just wild. Like, the only way you can do this is with conspiracy brain. In South America. These yeah, are dude. all old world depictions of that here? same god, Unsil, no protecting the, sun, the earth right. from the dragon. But you that's and I, ah, we're not artists. We can't draw this intricate design every single time we want to get across the idea that we're talking about this savior god. We have to come up with a shorthand version that any idiot can draw. Like the cross. Like the Ankh. In previous episodes, I connected the cross and the Ankh to the keyhole fish shape. These are all depictions of Orion, the Alpha and the Omega, or the son of Orion. This symbol depicts the oldest god. This is the god of this earth. And I hope you remember from a previous episode, <laughs> I talked about this ancient hillside guy. giant depicting Orion in the United Kingdom. Well, he has a neighbor an ancient hillside giant depicting the savior of the earth, the master of animals. Guys, you're looking at the green man. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> 
Sarah says she's done with Raid. We're going to play games later, but I'm finishing this video first. Uh, but I need her to bring me my rolling you. papers. Uh, one of them. Uh, I'm confused this guy is supposed to be an atheist or did something happen. Uh, yeah, something happened to his brain. He got broken up with and he just his fucking mind snapped. It's the green man like the hat man. The green man is is what Greg described as when you see a tree that looks like a, a fella. Some people thought, ah, it's green man. Dude. Yep. Greg got broken up with. And I've never seen a guy more broken up with. <laughs> he's like up This there, guy got he's broken up, up with, with Elon Musk, honestly. No, Elon Musk got divorced. Okay, Elon Musk got way more divorced than Greg got broken up with, but Greg got broken up with, dude. Holy shit. Have you ever seen someone more broken up with in your life? Jeez. That is a midlife crisis. That is... <clears throat> Normally, I would love to talk to somebody like this, but I don't even know. He would get so fucking upset with me. He would get so upset. He, I mean, I don't think he'd be capable of it, but like, but I, I would have him on in a second if he wants to come hang out and talk. I'll try not to be mean, but uh, <clears throat> I'm an atheist, Greg. <laughs> I don't believe, I don't believe in supernatural stuff. Surprise. I feel like any time I even mention astrology, all I'm doing is casting a spell to protect my virginity. But the constellations and the planets represent the heroes and the gods of our ancestors. The hero that protected the Earth and their struggle to survive each apocalypse. The constellations themselves are not literally the gods, but we chose them for their similarities to ex- The gods? Existing shapes. We know Leo already, the lion, the king. Some constellations might be harder to tell, like a centaur with a bow. We call that Sagittarius. Or a woman with her arms by her side. We call that Virgo. These are familiar to me. I recognize them. The feeling that I get about each story of the apocalypse is they all revolve around a fatherly man here on Earth that has wisdom or unique insight. And he somehow Ow. also represents a larger god that we see in the sky during the apocalypse what? the savior that literally defeats the dragon during the apocalypse there'll be about a three day long period where the dragon will have free reign to attack the earth the, the aurora borealis or the earth's electromagnetic field will be dead it will be made inert by the black hole sun But the I'm savior eventually returns at the end of those three days. The savior will hey, appear hey, in the clouds. Breaking news, I found the green man. You found the green man? Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, it says blue earth. Never mind. It's a different place. We live on green one. to defeat the dragon. This savior figure or this shape is what the archeological community has come to call the squatting man. The squatting man is among the oldest petroglyphs on the earth. Sometimes he's depicted on his own, and sometimes he's depicted with a giant spiral above his head. This one in particular depicts both the destroyer and the protector. There are examples of the squatting man in almost every continent around the world. Europe, the Middle East, Asia, the Andes, Venezuela, New Mexico, and Arizona. This is the green man, the Earth's electromagnetic field. Is he gonna say because is the central part? Look at look at what electromagnetic negative neg neg feels look like. Is Earth is millions of one up here, and this is one down here. Please say yes. There are several different versions of the squatting man, but you can pretty much tell that they're all depicting the same thing. A man with his arms out and rings by his side, or and a dick, and balls with gills. And titties! Look at them floppy titties! Ooh, wait, wait. Floppy titties. 
Dick Gilballs. Girl balls, maybe? Gill balls, girl balls, maybe they knew? Hmm. Giant hands. This looks exactly. Bro, go back in time and let Dave witness the fucking kid that got a hold of some fucking chalk and drew and drew a dick. Like, I've seen children draw ha more haunting things than this. And it's just like, because it's old, they're like, fuck, man, this must mean stuff. Not. Not this person has just got an imperfect idea of how art works and they're trying their best. <laughs> how do you show people have knees? Well, you bend it. Well, you bend them. You ever make a stick person and you just give them like a little knock in their knee and then you have someone sort of squatting? I've literally done this just naturally as a child. I'm serious. Like, look. You've done this before yourself. This is like a human thing that I've done. Go to paint. Okay, so you draw a uh, you draw a uh, stick person, and a lot of people go like uh, you know something like this. Uh, that's a normal stick person, and I think most people draw something like that. Uh, but I have definitely done this. Like. Just to show that they have fucking elbows and stuff. <laughs> I've also done like this as a kid. Maybe hair. Oh, and you can be like, oh, there's a there's a dress. That's how girls are. All girls wear dresses. Anyway. <laughs> and have big floppy titties. The rings but I wonder I wonder why uh ancient people maybe drew themselves with ribs. Hmm. By his musculature son. is what I see here. Hair, dreadlocks. Maybe like big wild hair. Like <laughs> or giant hands. This looks exactly like Unsil with his hands by his sides and his wings above his head and at his feet <sighs> yeah i mean humans are humans we draw ourselves this guy has ankles not knees this is different this guy's got a dick is this a dick too what are these now everyone on the internet seems to understand that ancient humans saw this shape in the sky. Everyone that... on the internet agrees that humans saw this shape in the sky? This shape was made out of plasma, but nobody on the internet seems to understand how this happened or what it is that's making this shape. What? The squatting man just so happens to line up with Orion, including the phallus between his legs. But do you remember in my Satan episode, I showed you the Adderant, a 33,000 year old Orion figure. 33,000 years ago, Orion yes, had yes. both of his arms above his head exactly like the squatting man this double everyone on the internet is greg's peoples are saying yeah blended trident design mimics the triple lightning bolts that zeus is holding when he's fighting typhon as well as the double-ended tridents that gilgamesh is holding in both hands while fighting his dragon he's holding two squatting men but the constellation orion only represents the green man because it resembles what the real thing looks like so the question is the why is the it the real he thing he keeps saying the real thing he has no fucking evidence for any of that that's crazy stuff the real life stuff would be like what no greg the mature fatherly hunter version of the hero with one arm above his head like orion <laughs> and we depict the savior version of the hero with his arms by his sides. Uh -huh. How do the two connect? And what do they mean? Well, just like there are two versions of the hero here on Earth, there are two versions of the hero in the stars. The constellation Orion is the hunter with one arm above his head, but there's also a miniature version of Orion that we call the constellation Hercules. Hercules, the son of Zeus, 
Hercules is in the same pose as Orion and takes a role in the legend that plays out across our sky. Hercules is the one that we depict in art with his arms by his side. This is the savior who protects the earth. Look, but the squatting man also takes the shape like of the, the tree of the life. One. Electromagnetism is the source of life in this universe. Without electromagnetism, I tell you. life would not exist. I said this a million times. Electromagnetism is the universe. Electromagnetism is God. When you look at a magnet from the side, the effect that it creates in space is a donut-shaped field called a... I fucking told you. I told you he was going to do this. I called it, bro. Toroidal field. Jake Stradamus! tell you about in science class Corn is Stradamus. through the middle of a magnet. I'm going to try my best to explain this as quickly as possible. Magnets are goddamn near impossible to understand. I've only heard maybe three people on Earth today that really understand what they're talking about. But if you look at the top and bottom of the toroidal field, you'll see that they sort of pinch. Well, that's because through the middle of the magnet is the most powerful part. If you take a magnet the shape of a puck, you try to get something to stick to the center, it will actually fling or collect on the side, on the edge of the magnet. If we were to look at the effects of a magnet, we think that the edges are the most magnetic part. But if you use a device to read the magnetism level, it will actually tell you that that center part is the most powerful. That center is actually pushing things out towards the edge. What's happening is the center is a zero point. It's zero point energy. It's causing a gravity well, which is causing things, the ether, the rivers, or the oceans of the universe to sort of collapse in like a drain hole. The it second- has to do. The ethers. The ethers. Okay. All right. I have to look this up. Zero point energy. The lowest possible energy that a quantum mechanical system may have. Unlike in classical mechanics, quantum systems constantly fluctuate in their lowest energy state as described by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Therefore, even at absolute zero, atoms and molecules retain some vibrational motion. Apart from atoms and molecules, the empty space of the vacuum also has these properties. Liquid helium retains kinetic energy and does not freeze. The notion of a zero-point energy is also important for cosmology, and physics currently lacks a full theoretical model for understanding zero-point energy in this context. In particular, the discrepancy between theorized and observed vacuum energy in the universe is a source of major contention. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking magnets, how do they work? And I don't want to talk to a scientist. Y'all motherfuckers lying and getting me pissed. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, okay, I'm not going to read this. Explain it to me, Greg. Secondary effect of this happening is the toroidal field on the outside. That's an eddy current in the ether in space, in the rivers and the oceans of the universe. And the two together are causing things to collect to the outside of the magnet. The cone shape in the center is actually happening in counter space. And we would normally not see this at all. Counter space? However, if you were to force plasma through a zero point or through a Z pinch, as they call it in the laboratory. Here it is. And you cause a high energy plasma discharge. Uh-oh through the magnet or through the magnetic toroidal field, whatever it is that they've set up, it will cause the plasma to take the shape of the squatting man. They so the thing that I drew uh, on a whim in kindergarten and stuff when I was drawing a thing was actually me depicting my understanding of the toroidal fields. Okay. They have recreated this in a lab two times at least. These are real photos. I know they're ugly and crude. But this is the squatting man in a laboratory. 
What's happening is that plasma is being forced through the center, taking that cone shape that we would normally not see. And the secondary effect that it's creating is a toroidal field also made of plasma on the outside. It's creating its own eddy current of plasma around the Earth, which is going to happen around the entire equator of the Earth. They used to depict black holes like this in art, though in a much more flat way, with a ring of debris rotating inwards towards the edge of the magnet. Or the I'm interested in why he thinks that these ancient peoples had access to the understanding of black holes and toroidal fields, and I... And I'm fascinated, like, like w what he thinks they had access to. Like, this sounds like ancient alien stuff. How do they have the context to know this? It's like you are applying y your your imagery bias on this. Like, you see a black hole, and so you're like, that must be a black hole. But that's not how they would describe it to you, if you could ask. It's just like such speculation. It's so weird. You see, you see a thing that looks similar to itself. It's not even the same thing. You see similar shapes and stuff, and then you just follow shapes. This is numerology, dude. Star, along with mass ejections of energy from the top and the bottom. No, Neutron you you stars are also it. depicted like this sometimes, almost like a cartoonish version of what <laughs> I've been describing this whole time. Like I said, the center of the magnet is actually pushing things out, and it's the outer edges of the magnet that are collecting them. Every single galaxy is shaped like this as well. This universal shape that we believe to be a gravitational effect matches the basic shape of a magnetic field. We believe to be gravitational. Everything is an effect of electromagnetism. So that constant flow of things blasting out of the top and bottom of the magnet, then coming back in and collecting on the outer side. Well, that's, that's not what the, the shape of the galaxies are, my dude. That is not the shape of a galaxy. I understand why you would think that. Electromagnetism plays a role in this? But like, what is this called? An accretion disk? Is that what that is? Or is that only on black holes? It's always fucking time. Like, like, it's just, uh, like, he sees, he sees symmetry in, in f physics systems and like, or art, and he's just like, well, that's it. That's there's the same shit. I, I basic shape of a magnetic field. Everything is an effect of electromagnetism. So that constant flow Everything. of things blasting out of the top I, and bottom. I'm fascinated by people who need one thing to be everything. The answer is just that not everything is just one thing. Like the universe it is a collective. Be? In the same way that I am a collective organism as well. Also explains the galaxy shape. Uh-oh. These are the galaxy shapes. Hmm. 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 No, every, every galaxy is shaped like the Milky Way. Of the magnet. Then coming back Only in spiral galaxies. No. Collecting on the outer side. That's the machine that runs the universe. That's the machine that allows life to exist. Without it, there would be no gravity, there would be no planets, there would be no stars, there'd be no photosynthesis. You sound exactly like a Christian. Like, this just sounds like... Um... Oh, what is the name of that argument? Fine tuning. It's just fine tuning, dude. <laughs> it's so weird to see him making a, such a basic, like little argument. Fine tuning is essentially like, is like if if the Earth was even an inch different than it is now, then life as we know it would be gone. That means that there's a divine presence keeping us aligned. Or else it would all fall apart. And that's just, like, not how the systems work. First of all, life is incredibly fucking hostile to us. And second of all, um, um, uh, the, the Earth oscillates wildly. Uh, third of all, um, the way evolution works is that we adapt to our environment. So if the environment was different and life existed, we would adapt differently to it. That's all. Um, so it looks, it feels fine-tuned because we adapt.
but like obviously people die constantly and are not in, in fact finely tuned to the environment in fact the very proteins inside of your cells would simply stop working now if you were to take two of these and stack them on top of each other one black one white one creating one destroying the constant recycling that would describe the entire universe with a heavenly realm above and a hell realm below and right in the middle the flat plane in the center that thin space with invisible light, the power of the rainbow is the only place where life is possible. The universe is not on a plane. Uh, you can look at it. We're on a sphere. So if you look at it and you just keep looking at it uh, and we, as we rotate through, you'll see it just fucking everywhere. There's universe in every direction. Um, flat universe i guess uh i understand what he's i think he would object to how i'm framing this and he would say that he's making like more of a metaphor situation here um like this is a fine cosmology for like D, &D. <laughs> you know this is an interesting like they have a positive and negative plane situation uh but he's he's not he's not i think he's being literal yeah he he you know it's not great inside of the Earth's electromagnetic field under the protection of the green man. I'm not saying that's how the universe actually works. I'm just saying that, uh, that that's how I would have done it if it were me. If, if you were in charge of the universe, Greg? Okay. Uh, what? What a weird. <laughs> just, just, just go home, Bruce. Your own. Go, go. It write a fantasy it. novel. <laughs> Said before, and I'll say it again. If conspiracy theorists just took up a hobby like creative writing or D and D, they make killer stories instead of slowly becoming insane. Yeah. During the worst of the apocalypse is when we're being hit by tentacles of plasma. The Earth's magnetic field will suddenly reappear inside of that active light show to protect us. During which time, the entire electromagnetic field will be completely bathed in greenish blue light. Plasma will be coursing right through the center of the Earth, creating the squatting man effect in our entire electromagnetic field. At the very beginning, it might even look as if pillars of light are shooting out of the north and south pole, creating a force field around the planet, something out of science fiction. It's even during this time, and only during this time, that the entire green man will be visible in the sky, from head to toe around the entire Earth. We will see the full shape of the Earth's electromagnetic field holding back the tentacles of Medusa. But the thing is, we're not going to... So apparently the apocalypse is like a solar flare. <laughs> okay. See a three dimensional model of it because we're going to be this tiny little speck in the center of this colossal light show. So we're only going to see a two dimensional cross section as we see through half of it. And a two dimensional cross section looks exactly like the squatting man, exactly like our ancestors drew thousands of years ago so why did they draw draw it thousands of years ago though like what's that what's the implication of that that they experienced this themselves so they experienced the apocalypse so it's a multi-apocalypse theory of creation and these are warnings like neolithic stuff or warnings of the next time the cycle's gonna hit <sighs> got shivers dude is that a cat Look, it's Miggy. Piggy. This will look like Hercules fighting the Hydra. It will look like the master of animals fighting beasts. It will look like the Archangel Michael fighting the dragon of Revelation. So as the Bible says, Jesus will appear in the clouds.
So I hope everything I've said in this series makes sense to you now. <laughs> and the very obvious point. I hope everything I said makes sense to you now. Fucking wow. Your head has been made. But just in case. Okay. This one time. I'm going to spell it out to you. All right, let's do it. This is Lucifer, the Messiah of every religion. You are living in the end times. The Destroyer is coming. What is he doing? And when the time comes and you're ready, it has to do. You will recognize the image of the Father. This is so fucking cringe. Dude, just, just get therapy, man. It's way easier. Like, what? It, uh, what? He's, he's becoming Onision? <laughs> he doesn't have nearly the charisma of Onision. <laughs> They said Greg's current arc is fucking weird. This is, uh, this is something. I'm not going to make a case for why you shouldn't want to go to hell. But here's the thing. I know that scary things can come from down there. That happens. Hell? Wait, now we're about hell? You believe in hell? But for the most part, they're pretty harmless. Devoid of personality. Two-dimensional, if you know what I mean. But the really bad ones come from up there. Good, bad, doesn't matter. To me, they're all moths. Eternal life is the real heaven. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is all around you. What in the, the fuck are you talking about? Is the best place for us to be. Here we can be as gods. We can create music, art, write stories, build marvels. I mean, sure, the sandbox is impressive. The master builder can pat himself on the back, but stop worshiping the design. Look at what you can create. Yes, God has music. The angels are constantly singing. Are they? What? But you can compose a song that makes me cry. An angel will never be able to do that. That's why this whole place exists, so that you can create, so that God is no longer alone. God is not the special one. You are the special one. God is just some bum nobody. You are endless potential. This is going to be the single most satanic thing you ever hear me say. Hey babe, wake up, new time cube just dropped. Hey, but heaven is awful it's endless blinding bright white light that fills every corner from which there is no darkness that you can escape the choir of angels is constantly screeching more painful than COVID. <laughs> there is no silence there is no life in heaven there's no passion there's no love there's no compassion there's no empathy People are not married nor given into marriage. They become as the angels. You cannot create. You cannot grow. You cannot develop. You cannot experience life. Obviously, hell is Come no better. Passion. It's the Relax, polar chat. opposite of that. So the best place to be is right in the middle. The best place to be is alive in Midgard. Please stop glorifying the afterlife. I know that this place can suck, but Earth, life, is the closest thing to paradise that we can achieve in the universe. We just need to stick it out one more time. Just one last time. And when we get through it, we will achieve that. And we will get through it. What? Because we do every time. Just remember, hold your breath, keep your feet firmly planted, 
And when the monsters start flying over your head, have your fly swatter ready. I could feel the pain that you were all experiencing, watching the world slowly crumble around you. Things are getting scary, I know. And I thought maybe- What world does this guy live in? I assume he means his big fucking sword. He's going to claim more some monsters. I think he means global collapse. He's like on some libertarian shit. Maybe this series would be a fun way that we could all talk about that. Talk about how our ancestors dealt with this. I thought maybe if I told you guys that this is something that happens all the time, then maybe you wouldn't worry so much about it. Being almost entirely isolated these last few years, it's really forced me to live my art. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, fuck. To immerse myself in these legends. And that allowed me to become these heroes, to become these storytellers, to better understand the world that they lived in, and maybe better understand the one that we live in. I talk no! about how much I love music all the time. If you go to my Instagram magic tab, that's a whole esoteric rabbit hole for you. Tons of homework. Rabbit Hole Part 2 by Arcade Fire, incidentally, is a really good song about what I've been talking about in this video. But if you want to... <laughs> Rabbit Hole Part 2 by Arcade Fire. <laughs> you want to hear that song for a second? Rabbit Hole. <laughs> uh, what song? What is that on? Is that on fucking everything now? No, it's not. It's not. Hold on. We'll find it. It might be on Reflector. <laughs> we'll find it. <clears throat> it's not her. It's not on servers. Wait, what's it on? <laughs> Why is the arcade on fire? I don't know. This one. Anyway, that's all we can listen to. That's the song. A really good theme I like that song. song for my own personal experience making this series. It's a theme I'd song. I'd have to go with Daffodil by Florence and the Machine. She nailed it, even right down to using a flower to show her an image of the future. Wowzers. I'm sure she had no idea. A generation soaked in grief. Were Bro, he is, he is seeing symbols in all sorts of shit. Hang out and hanging on by the skin of our teeth. I never thought it would get this far. This somewhat... He's, he's, he's reading fucking lyrics to songs he likes now, chat. This guy is to the point where he is, he is reading you lyrics. He's AOL instant messenger cope posting at the end of his videos at this point drunken joke sometimes i see so much beauty i don't think that i can cope i'm not bad i'm not good i drank every scar that i could made myself mythical tried to be real <laughs> saw the future in the face is he gonna do this for a long Other time eye. daffodil God, dude, I this is a this is full crisis mode. What are we doing? What the fuck is happening? Look at this. So, he is. You ever seen a gas mask bong? Gas mask bong. You know what I'm talking about. There's a guy. Uh, he actually just got paid again. Laramie Tunsil. This guy right here. Draft day bong. This is who I was thinking of. Uh, anyway, he's doing great. Um. He has one of these, but the tube on it is just fucking right up into his his man diaper. So every time he can toot, he goes, and he goes, 
And he huffs his fart real quick. He holds it in. <coughs> <sighs> Dude, this is sad shit. Florence and the Machine lyrics got this man bugging right now. Look I at him. I love you guys. <laughs> Good luck out there. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay. Now I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, I have nothing left for you guys. Uh, uh, I mean, she said, I'm sorry I have nothing left for you guys. We're watching the self-destruction of a man's entire worldview. It's ego death in real time. I this guy has gone so far off the fucking deep end. So fucking far. <laughs> 